Um, the video you just saw uh, ran on Thursday night, hours after uh, Greg had passed. Um, it was written by Drew Watkins, um, who heads up our creative team. Our creative team knows I can be kind of a pain in the butt when it comes to voicing their features. Because I, I said, well, does this sound like something I would say is this, you know, shouldn't we use this word here? Shouldn't we use this this way? And when I saw that script, I didn't have to touch it. Because it has absolutely encompassed Craig Sager. I've been sitting here with my wife, Cheryl, and looking at this photo of Craig from the Espies. And there's this look of, there's this look of despair and this look of unbridled hope. And it, and that was Sags who worked that room that night in Los Angeles. And I think of so many people, here's what Craig, here, here's what Craig has done, he's planted sequoias. Because there will be people who watched this fight, who unfortunately 10, 15, 20 years from now, we'll hear a doctor say, yeah, it's cancer. And they're gonna say, I remember when I was 15 years old and I watched this guy, Craig Sager, fight this thing. I can too. What we do at Turner Sports from time to time and this has been going on for 25 years. We'll have a preseason meeting about the NBA or our Major League Baseball coverage or, or Lenny Daniels will celebrate a birthday or we'll be at the Legends Brunch at All-Star Weekend. And I started writing poems to mark the occasion. And a lot of times the people at Turner, and there are so many here today, would say, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna write, he's gonna read the poem, I hope I'm not in it. <laughs> because it's not always the most flattering thing. Because you may have thought that you got away with something last NBA season that nobody noticed, but then somebody says, hey, did you hear about that? You might wanna put that in the poem. Oh, good, so I'll do that. So, I thought it was only fitting for a day like this when we honor Craig and celebrate his life that, um, well, this one deserved a poem. So, here goes. And so here we gather on this December morning, five days having passed since word came with no warning. Our buddy, our brother, our friend for so long had left us to ponder this thing, Sager Strong. He stood out as a newborn, his blanket magenta, <laughs> with hints of turquoise, lavender, and a touch of burnt sienna. Some babies had rattles and toys of their own. Craig had a loud suit and a new microphone. <laughs> he went to Northwestern, there honing his skills, where wildcat football had few winds or thrills. Those fall days in Evanston can be rather chilly when you're dressed as the mascot, freezing your willy. <clears throat> Craig would have loved that line. He got his big break working in Sarasota. Let me share with you this very true anecdote. Uh, the date April 8th, back in 74, Hank Aaron was knocking on the great Babe Ruth's door. 
Craig made the trip north to watch 715, and he did something none of us had ever seen. When Aaron connected on Al Downing's pitch, Craig ran on the field, that son of a gun. <laughs> the crowd's going nuts as Hank circles the bases, and there at home plate amid all of those faces is a guy in a trench coat that's not made to order. Yeah, that's Seggs with his Radio Shack tape recorder. You knew then and there with that move which took guts that great things awaited, no ifs, ands, or buts. He took his talents to KC and then moved again when stardom took hold as he hit CNN. A studio host and a roving reporter, he covered the country from border to border. Years at TBS followed and then TNT where his wardrobe some nights was must-not-see TV. <laughs> a paisley tie featuring diamonds was keen, a kangaroo blazer that jumped off the screen, a hand-woven belt from the bark of a willow, and shoes fashioned from a deceased armadillo. <laughs> but don't think for a moment it was just about style. If that is your thinking, you're off by a mile. He prepped for each game with meticulous flair. A pro's pro does that when he goes on the air. And that's why when Craig's cancer fight became known that there was just so much love and respect being shown. Because coaches and players all know they arrive when they stand next to Craig in the interviews live. They loved his work ethic. But in truth, at day's end, they viewed Craig as a colleague and, above all, a friend. He'd ask the tough question when it had to be done, and somehow the subject would say, and that was fun. Now, working with Craig, here's one thing you should know. Did the man ever sleep? I do not believe so. <laughs> He'd go running each day and do research at night. I'm told he once went to Hooters and had a Bud Light. <laughs> the golf course always was, for Craig, a favorite destination. He took $10 million off his friends by estimation. <laughs> he won the Carmo Classic every year, was undefeated. And afterwards, in disbelief, he'd say, you think I cheated? I really, truly do believe no man enjoyed life more. That laugh, that smile, that joy we saw when, when he walked in the door. And how we worship Stacy. How we love the sound of dad. How he knew his job was one that everybody wished they had. That vibrant, thankful part of Craig was never lost or hidden even when his illness laid him low, and I'm not kidding. You'd visit him and hope to cheer him up or lift his spirit. He'd expressed his hopeful outlook and make you glad that you could hear it. There were countless chemo hours, many a sleepless night, that marked this unrelenting, awe-inspiring cancer fight. And then there was the profound impact that Craig Jr. had. Not once, but twice, this faithful son gave life to his dad. In honesty, we weren't surprised that Craig returned to work. For all of us to see him on the sidelines was a perk. To see him interviewing Pop, Rick Kyle, Lara Ladakh, Seggs was back and using every second of the clock. And how that must have felt to hear the roars of fans leak wide, who cheered his courage, men took selfies standing by his side. I watched him work a playoff game, fly home, and right away have chemo, board a flight, 
and hit the sidelines the next day. In each NBA city, there were T-shirts, there were signs. As admiration freely flowed, arenas became shrines. It truly was miraculous, his will, his fight, his grit. It's as if he said, you're cancer, huh? Well, I don't give a darn. <laughs> the man that we reflect upon this day was just a treasure. The number of folks who he inspired, there's just no way to measure. At the ESPYs, when they got that honor name for Jimmy V, in a room of marquee players, Craig's the guy they came to see. He delivered the most eloquent and heartfelt speech that night. He displayed that, in our darkest times, one man can be a light. The line we'll all remember cut through sorrow like a knife. Time, Craig said with passion, is simply how you live your life. And so amid the tears and all the memories we cherish now, we say farewell to our friend Seggs and make this humble vow. There's no way to gauge the days we have, no way to know how long. But know this Craig will do our best to live him sick or strong.